So a few days back, Automation had its biggest update in a long time, which was the Total Engine Designer revamp, which basically overhauled the airflow simulations, the turbo simulations, and a bunch of other stuff as well for the designer. Since then, there have been a few patches for the newest update to iron out the bugs. But I personally feel like the update is still really exploitable and just a little bit unrealistic. But what we're doing is building a car with over 1,000 horsepower per liter. Now to put that in perspective guys, the Bugatti Chiron has a horsepower per liter ratio of 185 horsepower per liter, which sounds like a pretty healthy amount, right? The Koenigsegg Yesco has a 5 liter twin turbo V8, and that thing makes 313 horsepower per liter, which is approaching double the Bugatti Chiron. And I find it absolutely mind boggling that in this game right now, you can build an engine with around 1400 horsepower per liter, which is nearly five times the horsepower per liter of a Koenigsegg Gesco. And it's like, what, like 10 times almost the horsepower per liter of a Bugatti, which is insane, insane. It's absolutely crazy. What's up guys, I'm Rai and welcome back to some more automation and BMNG drive. So in front of us is a Volkswagen Beetle body and it looks seemingly innocent, except it's not going to be. It's going to be housing the highest specific output engine of all time. I'm not too sure what we're going to do for styling because it's kind of hard to get away from the Volkswagen styling. I might just make a very aggressive looking Volkswagen bug because that seems actually kind of cool. I genuinely love the shape of this car. The engine itself is going to be obviously insanely expensive and quality spammed. And I think it's only fair if we make the rest of the body maybe a little bit quality spammed as well. Maybe we're making like some sort of like SEMA style build. It's going to be some sort of crazy um bill just to show off technological advances of whatever we're doing today I, I don't really know maybe we've got some brand new en engine technology to show off so it's gonna have a carbon fiber panel material it's gonna be a monocoque chassis and maybe we'll do like a standard chassis material maybe they've replaced all of the panels with carbon fiber we might go for a like a rear engine it just seems like a bit of a classic touch to like the old beetles were it's gonna be a double wishbone front and i guess we'll do double wishbone in the rear as well pretty fancy suspension setup but this is kind of a one-off project car going to be an inline four engine we might as well just do the best material because this engine's already going to be absolutely just insane in in basically every way the smallest possible so right now we're at 313 cc's we're going to plus 15 quality here we need to make the engine though a little bit smaller so in the engine variant tab here we will go and lower this down and now our engine is a 178 cc four cylinder which is very very tiny it's going to be of course the best of the best internal wise so I have done test builds and I, I sort of know what I'm doing at this point in time. It's going to be a 12,000 RPM redline plus 15 quality VVT all cams. And this is going to be 70 on these springs and lifters. So decently stiff and 100 cam profile and almost max compression. They've actually increased it now to, to 16. We're going to go 14.8. It's going to be, of course, turbocharged with smart boost, a very small intercooler, basically the smallest size possible because it just needs to be there. Plus 15 quality, we will do, I think, 1.8 on the compressor size. And we will do um, the max turbine size, which is, I think, 1.8, 1.9. Do 26 on the AR. And we will do 66 pounds of boost, which is pretty gosh darn insane. Injection. Obviously, it's going to be direct injection, single point or per cylinder race. And we're going to go for 40 manifold size. And we're going to go for minus five and we want methanol fuel. We want it very, very lean and max quality there. And this we will go for a tubular race exhaust. We're going to go for nothing, nothing, nothing. And this will be 2.25 and this will be 65. Now the engine might not work perfectly right away in plus 15 here, but we are pretty close to my record. So we are at 255 horsepower. Now you guys might be saying that that seems like a pretty average amount of horsepower. Guys, this engine is a 180 cc engine if we do the math here okay guys let's just divide uh, 1000 which is 1000 cc's divided by 178 which is how much we have so we need a times a horsepower by 5.61797752809 to get the exact amount we want so let's times our 255 horsepower or so times our 5.61 blah 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 and that gives us right off the hop without tuning actually 1,432 horsepower per liter, <laughs> which that's not normal. That's not normal, guys. I think I say this a lot, guys, that we've broken the game and that we've we've peaked. This is the peak, guys. No, this is the peak. It will not get better than this. I mean, I'm sure some people will get a bit higher than this, but like the principle is it's terrible. Like, look at the power band. Look at this. 
<laughs> Look at this, guys. By the way, it idles at 2,500 RPM. It makes only, what, five horsepower. It makes five horsepower. So yeah, it's not going to win any races. And then once you're still driving here, it kicks into, you know, a, a brisk 16 horsepower at 6,000 RPM. And if we go to maybe like 9,000 RPM or 10,000, it's making 40 horsepower, which is modest horsepower for a K car. And then a little higher to 11,000 RPM, we are making 120 horsepower. That's actually kind of reasonable for a compact car. And then bam, 250 horsepower. The turbocharger compressor is just absolutely melting. The turbine's melting. Um, the intercooler is getting a little, little hot and stuffy. But yeah, the knocking, apparently there is, it's yellow, but it's not knocking at all. It's actually, yeah, it's just not. Uh, let's just take a second to hear what this engine sounds like though, because I feel like it's going to sound either terrible or really impressive. That's actually not terrible. It's not terrible sounding. I want to point out that the engine throttle response is 20 out of a maximum 100. Um, so that's not great. The engine actually weighs 104 pounds dry, which is insanely light for an engine. Drive train, it's going to be four wheel drive with maybe a dual clutch. We're going to lower the top speed down because this thing is just not going to have top speed. We're going to make the gearing really tight. Let's give it just like some semi slick tires. Thicker in the rear, though. We don't actually really need that thick of tires. This car doesn't have tons of horsepower. No entertainment, no interior. It's it's basically just a show car. It's not meant to actually be driven, really. It's 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 a terrible car. It's going to be just like just generic suspension. We're gonna increase we're gonna decrease the quality of our safety to lose some weight. And right now, without any tuning, it weighs 1,660 pounds, which seems fine for a car with 250 horsepower. But that seems not bad. Problem is, guys, it's it's still insanely slow. This car has a better power to weight ratio actually than like a brand new Ford Mustang GT with a V8, which is what, 480 horsepower, I think. And if ours had, you know, the same weight as a Mustang, we'd have like over 500 horsepower. So it's it's definitely a little slow and it, it's it's definitely the gearing. If we actually go to more speeds, we will be quicker. And let's give it only maybe, maybe rear wheel drive, which sounds like a bad idea for such a laggy car, but it's going to be a little quicker. The car costs three quarters of a million dollars. It weighs 1,185 pounds. Now it's getting kind of spry. 8.7 seconds isn't bad. All right, a bit more tweaking and tuning. The car now weighs 960 pounds, which is insanely light. It's got an incredible power to weight ratio, but it still does the zero to 107.8 seconds because the car is so laggy and the gearing is so terrible, but there's not really much we can do honestly about this thing. It's just, it's just not going to be uh, a very reasonable car. I feel like so the basics of the car are pretty much done. It weighs under a thousand pounds. It's got 250 horsepower and it's absolutely insane. So what I need to do now is design the car and I'm going to do that in a time lapse. You guys can watch that and then I'll hop into BMG drive and see how this thing drives. So sit back, relax guys and enjoy. So we're starting the build for my Volkswagen Beetle clone, except it's not going to be a Volkswagen Beetle clone at all. It's going to be a basically a supercar but terrible in every way possible. So the front end is going to have these sort of circular headlights, similar to a Beetle, but a very much more aggressive front fascia with more grills, openings, and vents. Uh, I've made the car in leather texture, so it's easier to see the curves and dips here. Playing around the idea of having a big sort of whale tail kind of wing on this thing, which I think looks super cool. The headlights still tweaking that, and the basic grill and vent shape on the bottom. This is going to be my Vanderine brand, which is a, a Dutch car maker that usually makes pretty high performance luxury cars. But this is their cheap little sporty offering, I, I feel like, at least in this case, maybe similar to a Mercedes-Benz A-Class, except this is a two-door and a small coupe, basically. I think some sort of grill slots here and a sort of emblem badging for the Vanderine V logo. I, I added some mirrors, I'm adding some headlight projectors and the daytime running lights for the headlight itself. Now, I kind of wanted to make it a sort of an easier way, so I went a little bit, you know, slacking. I made it quickly and easy. It still looks pretty good, though, but I just made it pretty quick and easy. Adding some supports for the back wing because I think it looks pretty weird without them. Going to the side now, adding some sort of dips and creases and some some sort of body kitting on the car itself. Some skirts, some some front lips and stuff. Adding the indentations for the door panels on the actual dips and curves on the side of the car. We changed the name to the Vio uh, Plus 4 SEMA. Vio uh, is just a word and Plus 4 SEMA is also just a word. I added the whole rear diffuser, which I think looks pretty sick with standard dual exhausts. And I play around with the idea of having this really elongated rear taillight bar. Um, and I, I go through the entire process of actually making it with these lines and stuff. Um, and I really just can't understand uh, how to make it 
how I want, if, if that makes sense. So I go through the entire effort, and I'll put this in here because it's, it's actually pretty, pretty crazy. I think it looks pretty darn cool like this. It looks very aggressive, very sporty, quite modern. Um, but I'm not sure how exactly to fill it out uh, and make it look pretty good. Tail lights are actually like my weakest link when it comes to car building. So I, I, I instead opt for these sort of very much similar, but much more simplistic style, uh, circular-ish tail lights on the rear that don't actually connect. Um, similar to a beetle, I think, actually, if I recall. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Adding a license plate holder in the rear, some indentations and stuff, changing the car to yellow. And in front of us is the 2020 Vanderine Vio Plus 4 Thema. Alright, so we're in Beam G Drive. This is the West Coast Drag Strip map. And I just want to say this wing is absolutely obnoxious, and I'm all here for it. Obviously, the first thing I want to do is a drag race in the VO Plus 4. But before we do, I just want you guys to hear how absolutely just wild this engine sounds. So the idle is like 2500 RPM, which is very, very high. And obviously, a red line is 12,000. So we're going to start it up here, and you guys can just take a listen. It also revs up exceedingly slow, probably because the flywheel is so heavy, I guess, something like that. It sounds kind of like a race car, honestly. Just kind of loud, obnoxious, just there, you know, in your face. If we actually rev it up here, I'm full flooring it now. <laughs> it's just not impressive. Like, I don't know, it's weird. It's also extremely loud. All right. In manual. So zero to 60 in 6.1 seconds. Actually pretty gosh darn decently quick. Uh, this thing is just so loud. It's so slow. I kind of messed up my shift there, but you know, a, a 15 second or so quarter mile is just uh, terrible. Um, but the 0 to 60 is actually kind of impressive for how terrible a quarter mile is. Now, if this car had like a proper a power curve where it had power, you know, everywhere else besides peak RPM, it would actually be a pretty quick car because this thing weighs, what, under 2,000 pounds or around 2,000 pounds, something like that, which is just crazy. Hey guys, this is just flooring it, by the way. <laughs> okay, suspension. Suspension's a little stiff. It's a little stiff. Oh, it's so bad. Imagine cruising at like 60 miles an hour at six and a half thousand RPM. <laughs> That'd be so nuts all the time. But yeah, let's go in first person here. No, it's much quieter. Oh, this is like, this is almost serene. We're flooring it now. I can't tell. Like, it feels like we're going so slow in this thing. The car itself looks so good, though. I think, like, the back is, is alright. Uh, you guys might not like the wing, but I love the wing. It's just insane, basically. This is basically like a SEMA build of a, a Vanderine Vio, I guess, compact coupe, I guess is what this is. Um, I want to hop into a trick, maybe like a small twisty track, and we'll just see how that drives. We finally made it to some sort of Italian map. We're going to do one quick lap around this track with this car. And just guys, this car is just not good. It's not good. Oh, wow, that sounds cool. It's actually, it boosts hard, and it's actually kind of fun. Brakes are definitely a little bit insane for this thing. The road's not too narrow. So it's a little narrow. I almost want to just boost like a, like a little spaceship or something. It's, it's quite interesting to drive. Oh, it's terrifying. <laughs> it's so slow. Nothing, 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 nothing. Like, if I could race this thing at a stoplight, it would just be absolute blasphemy. Just revving the piss out of it. But like, no, no, officer, I'm not, I'm not revving my car, this is just... This is how it sort of drives normally. Don't worry, officer, it's fine. Oh, there's the finish line. Oh, we're right there, okay. Um, long story short, 
this car is uh, atrocious in like every way that actually matters. Um, it does sound quite good though. It sounds like a race car. Um, it it'd be a pretty fun car to watch at a red light race because it would just launch offline so insanely hard if you just rev it out to twelve thousand. Um, I think we're gonna finish this off with a jump in the jump arena. This car is just for all intents and purposes horrible to drive, but we will do a couple of jumps maybe the jump arena and just see how it does. One thing I'll say about this car is, I think it just looks cool. I've always thought the Beetle looked quite good, at least in this generation. I love this sort of kick up we have on the side here. It's so slow. Oh no. What if we just look at this? Let's just roll up here. Let's just launch it right here. Like this. Just straight down. We'll launch it. For maximal effectiveness. Ready? <laughs> this is kind of intense, actually. There we go, 2.6 seconds to 100. That's not bad. But we are topped out now at top speed. The engine's definitely gonna blow. It's fine. That was such an impressive, like, just jump. Oh, wow. Is this me or do the... Does the damage just sound different? This car is just tumbling, my gosh. That's pretty nuts. The sound doesn't sound perfect, but it sounds a lot better. This thing still runs perfectly fine. I'm not sure if you guys know, but this is what peak performance looks like. So I think we'll finish off here. Man, this car is looking actually just really cool. I think it looks, I think it looks awesome. I'll leave a link if you guys want to download it. This is now, from what I understand, the highest specific output engine, basically, of all time in automation, as far as I know. Uh, prove me wrong, though. Let me know in the comments down below how high you guys have gotten with a very small engine. If you guys want to join my Discord, I'll leave a link in the description, as well as, of course, the download link for this vehicle. If you guys have an idea for another build, let me know in the comments down below. I'm always looking for new ideas, and what's could be next. So thank you guys so much for watching, and of course, as always, I'll see you next time. Alright guys, I'm, I'm really leaving now. I'm, I'm, I'm leaving.